Yeah, I'm very sorry for that. Uh, the the video uh, was full, and let's continue. Yeah, a question I want to ask all of you who play, all of you who play For Honor, I want to question, ask you a, a, a really interesting question. What uh, faction do you hate the most in For Honor? And, and please tell me why do you hate that faction? Or what is, and the other question is, what faction do you love the most? And why do you like the fact, this faction the most? And for me, I know, probably maybe I'm wrong, but for me, it, many people don't like the Wulin faction, and I'm very interested to know why they don't like the Wulin faction. And I'm uh, very interested to hear that. It's very interesting for me. Uh, do they f are they too overpowered the Wulin factions, or are they do they f to, uh, is it hard with new heroes when they are already have the free old one like the Samurai Knight and Viking? Please tell me. I'm very very interested to hear that. I just uh, other thing before is uh, before I start again is um, please tell me why I, I, and try to be uh, polite when you tell um, don't say uh, yeah tell the way you want uh, about who what you, faction you like the most or faction you like the least uh, you don't like and uh, I is this uh, yeah uh, it's interesting to hear hear what. People can play for honor, think what is the best faction, and this kind of thing. And my favorite is probably the most hated is the Wulin, and uh, this is what I think. If I just scale them to the most popular factions in for honor, I think the most popular faction in for honor is the samurai, and the second place is the Viking, and the third place is the knight, and the last of them. Is the Wulin is what I think is the most uh, highest of the played faction, and I uh, I cannot I don't know why, but maybe uh, Samurai is always gonna be Samurai is always gonna be very popular in video game in general, uh, so I don't I cannot explain why, but I always prefer more the Chinese um, uh, Chinese. Uh, heroes in the game games and so on uh, to the Japanese um, in games and this kind of thing yeah so let's go Sunda is the man, and Sun Hu is the female, and yeah, so, and now we can hear, and after that, when I speak about, I have to tell about the lore, I will um, have to talk after that. Let's continue. And we're back. So for those who are joining us, I'm Big Mike, and I'm joined now with Elise from the narrative team and Christian, Andrew, and Anthony from the art team. So let's talk about Sunda, the John Who. Yes. Who is he? Who are they? Who are the John Who? Who are the John Who? So for that character, yeah, as usual in year th uh, three of the Harbinger, we are trying like to explore who are the darkest heroes in each faction. Yes. So as you mentioned, you, you, we had Vortiger, the Blackfriar, who are who are more on the gothic side. We had Sakura, uh, Hitokiri, who was yes. more on the ghostly uh, spirits, the world of spirits uh, side. Mm -hmm. uh, for the Yamangander, like he was more a feral hero, like doing oh, yeah. some gruesome, gruesome stuff. <laughs> Power of the storm. Exactly. And now for Sunda, so we are trying to explore something new, something more on the noble, elegant side of darkness, basically. Oh, okay. Because the, because of the Wulin, like as a as a as a group, they are really. Uh, more elegant in general, there there's more hierarchy in their empire. So mm -hmm. we'll try like to explore that and to uh, give a bit more sense of those. Uh, All right, things. great. So, 
who are the Jianhu in the empire? So the Jianhu, um, sorry if I'm not like, the pronunciation is very hard. I'm, I'm, I'm fully aware of that. I'm not, uh, <laughs> sadly, I'm not a Mandarin Chinese speaker. Yep. Uh, I do speak five languages, but not that one. Not that one. <laughs> uh, but uh, that being said, so the Jianhu, for that one, we, yep. we really tried like to, uh, to sort of honor all the movies, the Chinese movies that you can see, like that are mm -hmm. set in uh, medieval China. Yep. And for, for that hero, so they are uh, wielding a weapon called the Chengdao. Chengdao. which is a very long blade that you will yeah. see like with Stefan a bit later on and they're also like the masters of fire what we mean by that is like they have developed so, sort of a tech like something aligned with alchemy mm -hmm. uh, basically they're making make many experiments uh, and like they're the right hands of great rulers in the Wulin Empire basically right. so they are working from the shadows and trying to uh, assert the power of the emperors and any rulers that you can find in the Wulin Empire Okay, so they're That's very close job. to the emperor, basically. Exactly, they're they're yeah. the special forces exactly, of the imperial yes, army. Yes. All right, great. So, first character, Sunda. Yes, Sunda. So, as you saw in the trailer, he's very fiery as a character, mm -hmm. obviously. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but for his backstory, so what we tried like to uh, to shape for that one is, uh, he basically betrayed his entire family to gain more power. Okay. Uh, there was a battle between uh, his family and the emperor at that time, and uh, his family failed. So he was given a choice, basically. As the, the son of the warlord, uh, he, uh, the, the, the Wulinair warlord, he decided like to, he had to choose between uh, serving the emperor and murdering his entire family, or die with his family. And he chose to he chose actually... the emperor. Yes, the emperor. Uh, that's so he ruthless. slaughtered all, all his young brothers and his father, everyone that fought during that battle. Wow. And to pledge his allegiance to the to the emperor. Yeah. Okay. That's what wow. he did. And what brings him to Heathmore? So we are, what we are going going to like to try for this season is to sprinkle a bit of lore here and there, mm -hmm. and to like uh, slowly get you to to learn more about why uh, they are joining now the battlefield. So they'll get to know soon. Yes, soon, <laughs> as the other guy would say, like on the <laughs> in my, my left. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> Yes, you will know soon, here and there, you, you will see. All right. Um, and in Year of the Harbinger, yes. every character that we've released has a counterpart. So who's the counterpart for Sunda? Yes, the counterpart, uh, so her name is Fu Huo. Fu Huo, okay. And she's like she's been known in the Wulin Empire as some sort of, like uh, almost a witch, because she has such mastery of fire. She's so devoted to her craft that people uh, began like to have to spread crazy rumors about her. Right. So it caught the attention of the Empress, uh, who traveled to like to meet her. Uh, and at first, Fu Hu was like determined like to kill anybody uh, that would come to her because that's <laughs> she she's just she just wants to experiment with fire. So she's like this right. sort of almost a crazy scientist in a way. Yep. And but then the Empress got attacked, and Fu Hu defended the Empress because the enemies were were so strong that it forced her like to push her art to a new level, basically. Okay. So she saw that an, an, an opportunity and decided to join the, uh, the, em the Empire forces to basically hone her craft. Right. So basically for her, it's not about loyalty like it nope. was for Sunda. It's all about just a means to an end. Exactly. Yeah. She, she just wants to uh, uh, find the right place like to become an, an even greater master of fire. All that's, right. Uh, so that's a noble thing. megalomaniac and an arsonist. Exactly. <laughs> that's what yes. We're getting yes. This time. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> but I mean, in the world of For Honor. Yeah, it's almost it's, like. No. It fits. Yeah. Would you want anything else? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I'll let the community decide. All right. Obviously, and yeah, maybe uh, just to conclude, uh, as usual, like uh, the narrative in the in this game is meant to like to inspire people, but we are not uh, forcing any like specific ident identity for the players. Like the players right. in the game will play as. Chan Hu. A Chan Hu, yeah. Then they can decide if they are like Sandao, Fu Hu, or any other Chan Hu that they could imagine. Right. That's uh, great. That's All right. Day. Well, thank you for that. Thank you. And now let's I'll have a look the at the visuals for this new character. Okay. Before they show the visual, uh, show the picture of the armors and this kind of thing, uh, I'm have to say uh, I say wrong. Uh, this is Shou Shu and Fu Fu, ha, Fu Dao. I, oh, horrible I, to, I, to say in Chinese name it's too uh, hard for me but they are like uh, what she say um, they are uh, elite soldier some are uh, like uh, similar to the Varinian guard for the Byzantine emperor 
this one are the elite guard to protect and the, like similar to the musketeer for the French king they are the elite guard to protect the emperor uh, one of them uh, like the female uh, uh, is a master of fire like a fire weapon like fire bombs uh, and like the uh, flamethrowers and this kind of thing we know in in real history that the Chinese and the Byzantines use uh, flamethrower weapons like different uh, weapons with uh, flames and the Koreans do of course on the ships they have flamethrower on the ship um, they use in the turtle ships and this kind of thing and yeah so like um, both of them are like uh, like corrupt uh, people both of them really want to uh, 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 take power like the, the um, Sunda uh, I only remember that Sunda he uh, want so much power as possible uh, this is why he killed all his family and then he joined the emperor as a uh, ro uh, elite uh, guard for the emperor uh, or you can say royal guard um, I don't know the name in uh, yeah and the other one was a, uh, is a fanatic uh, Chinese uh, uh, she almost like a, she always almost like a witch um, but she mo he's, he's, I think witch is the wrong thing to say I think is more she more like a fanatic alchemist. She's much more um, an alchemist, uh, like a alchemist to make weapons, yeah, like a fire weapon. And I think is yeah. I think I think more. I, I will say she, she's an alchemist, a very 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 good alchemist to make fire, and they are uh, yeah. They are simple way to say it all is they are elite soldiers. They are the grand de la grand. For the empress, uh, emperor, and empress, protection, and they, and they use uh, um, the Chinese longsword. Um, I, I don't know if uh, they um, they say the name, but I think you can say um, uh, Mao Dao, or Shang Dao. I think they are same uh, weapons. Uh, if they are not, please leave me in the comment. If they are two different weapons, but every time I uh, sh search on Chinese longsword on the uh, on Google, uh, and uh, they are they always gonna bring up this sword with uh, Shang Dao or uh, Mao, Mao, da Mao Dao. I think they are similar, but this this sword they call it the Shang Dao, and this uh, lo Chinese longsword, uh, and this kind of thing, and uh, and yeah, I'm very it's gonna be. Is very uh, very glad for that, that they use a diff more rare weapon, more rare sword for the Chinese, and they can just they can also just take the most common, most famous sword of them all, a G sword, is the most. Well, I'm very very glad that they use this sword instead, for it's much more interesting to see this sword, and yeah, and now I will sh now they go now they're gonna show the armor set and that. let's go. So, still. So, first thing first, uh, as Elise was saying, we know we were going to explore a very high rank character. Mm -hmm. So, one of we need to go back to the PowerPoint. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <Spoiler. clears throat> almost, almost there. there. Come on, yeah. Max. Come on, yeah, Max. Good. All right. So, let's see it. <laughs> so, first, for, first thing first, we had a talk with our team in Chengdu yep. uh, because we're adding this Chinese culture in the Wuling family and. Uh, these guys were very helpful, sending some uh, some good references. I would like to point out um, the help of a guy who was yeah. not even part of the For Honor team. Oh. The thing I just want to say uh, for people so like history and people are uh, like uh, history buffs and for armors and this kind of thing. I'm one of them. I love armor, especially Middle Eastern and Asian armor from Asia. And this helmet there is a Ottoman helmet, uh, and uh, very interesting that they take influence from the Ottomans. So this one is not the Chinese one. This one with the like a, a gray with the um, the, the it's a, especially uh, um, uh, uh, Ottoman and or a Safavid uh, art helmet. And so this very uh, it's very interesting. 
and I'm very hopeful when I see this helmet that they maybe this just maybe 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 in the future they maybe can do an Ottoman or a, a Safavit or a, a Mameluk faction should be awesome to see a, a, a Ottoman faction with like a, like a Janissaries uh, in this game fighting against the Wulin, Samurai Knight and the Vikings and have an Ottoman map like a like a Byzantian map, big big map should be so cool. So when I see this helmet, I know it's just um, inspire, inspire, inspiration picture uh, for the new Woolin hero, but I just I'm so glad to see that they take inspire for uh, from the Ottoman uh, helmet design and of course the other um, Middle Eastern warriors and yeah and so this one is is it uh, from the Ottoman continue let's continue he was working at Ubisoft Chengdu yep. but he was he's a fan of the game and he practiced martial arts okay. and he when we went there in uh, in China he did this amazing presentation with different type of weapons how we use them uh, with very good knowledge and he made us change our mind about the weapon oh. this is how we went with the uh, the Chan Dao the Chan Dao yeah uh, so he's called Bruce we yeah. can even yep. call him they say the Chan Dao okay uh, I, I I I just think the final thing I just think the Shang Dao are the same uh, sword as the Mao Dao, um. It, but if I'm wrong, uh, somebody know so uh, knows about Chinese uh, swords. Please leave me a comment and tell me. But it's if it's different with the Mao Dao and Shang Dao, uh, are they different swords? Are they different handles? Are they different shape? Are they more longer, more shorter than the other one? Uh, I I just want to hear about somebody. Some are knowing about these kind of things. Um, uh, if you know, leave me a comment. If you don't know, don't leave me a comment. But only leave me a comment if you know, really, really know. Uh, what is the different? Are the same weapons? Are the different weapons? I just in want. I just interesting to hear. If they are different or the same, yeah. Let's continue. Master Bruce, <laughs> uh, very good work. Thank you very much. Shout out Bruce. to Master Bruce. Thank you, Bruce. So with all the, the the references, with the bio, this is where we get to start the the sketch process. Oh, okay. Wow. So those are all iterations of the sketches, as you guys by know by Sorry, now. Yeah. It's yep. the first exploration sketches. Uh, a lot of them reference from the the movies also, mm -hmm. or, or the reference from the the Shangdu Studio. Right. It's given to us, and this was a. Uh, the sketches that we can kind of go berserk up, up to how far that we can explore. Right. What uh, movies did you use as a reference? It's the Brotherhood of Blade. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So basically, the, the first sketch was very inspiring to us. So mm -hmm. they, this is the first one that was a fitting the, the character. He was the protector, the bodyguard of the emperor. Yes. And then this is a literal reference of uh, the, the real uh, cultural uh, Chinese um, bodyguard. Yep. Yeah. So this this is uh, we we decided as a first one. Yeah, and we want we wanted to be uh, we wanted to have a faithful and genuine approach with these guys. Yeah. Uh, so here, I I think this one, the like the laminar armor with the helmet, and the sword behind his neck uh, are more inspired from the Mongol like a Mongol or and the, and of course the Ming like this. I'm pretty, pretty sure that they are should be a Ming uh, elite soldiers from the Ming dynasty, and of course the Ming's also use firearm, but they don't. Of course they don't can they don't use firearm in For Honor, but they are um, much more advanced uh, advanced warriors in reality. Against if you really want. Um, Okay, if I do a very very short uh, comparison, like uh, Ming warriors comparable to the Vikings uh, and this kind of thing. Vike is Ming always will win because the Ming have much better weapons and much better higher technology with firearms. Um, 
So that's a very important thing to know. But I've, I, I'm pretty sure that the, uh, the, the, the woman so explain the lore and the history of the Wulin heroes, say they are inspired, they are Ming uh, elites, uh, uh, royal guards, like uh, elite soldiers for the emperors and the empress. And I, when I see this armor, I really, really think about the Ming. It's, it's cool, but uh, it's very cool. I was much more hoping for the Tang, but Ming is my second uh, favorite um, dynasty in Chinese history. Uh, with the uh, and so on, so that that's continue. Sorry. For example, the first one is obviously uh, uh, really an inspiration, an inspiration from the the movie uh, mm -hmm. Brotherhood of Blades. Yeah. Second one, we wanted to have something different with more gear. Uh, somebody yeah. like could be a guard, uh, an emperor's guard. Yeah. And the the last one, we see him more like a, a noble. There's yeah. a, it's very classy. You're gonna see uh, all the characters uh, later on in the build. This is some variations, just just a sneak peek on what we'll see uh, on the build. But very, I think we put all the money on this guy. <laughs> it's a lot we of the fancy money. stuff uh, in there. Oh, well, they look really great. So we had it right there. You go. Okay. Yeah. So. So the, for the face Fuhu. of uh, yeah. Fuhu. Yeah. Fuhu, yes. Fuhu. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we were trying to be faithful to the narrative, so mm -hmm. she has a uh, it's kind of witch type of a feeling that we, we wanted to kind of uh, bring. It's, uh, she has a very cold, mean, and uh, merciless type of look. Yeah. And for the Sunda, uh, he's a very ambitious one. Yeah. He's a very focused, and the, as you can see, there's a burn mark on the right, which is uh, the result of uh, experiment accident. Yeah, a bit of scarring. I, yeah. I guess one of the fireworks went off a bit early. Exactly. But we can see that it has been a while because the eyebrows had time to had time enough to grow back. <laughs> <laughs> Tiny scar. But there's yeah. this, this small scar, yeah, but. <laughs> this is all the right. player expression. Yeah. So this character exposed very well all the all the player expression that the players will be able to play with the symbols, the patterns. If you still want to go blank, very uh, very simple, You there's no manda mandatory spot, so right. you, you'll be able to look like the first one. Okay. Ornaments, uh, ornaments of on course. The shoulder. Yeah, That's on the shoulder, the pretty consistent with what we've done so far. It gives us the freedom on the on the headgear, which is, yeah. this one has some pretty fancy uh, yeah, headgear. Yeah, yeah, they have some very special traditional headgears. Very nice, yeah. Nice. Uh, a little sneak peek on the uh, yeah. the build that Anthony and Seb will present later. The Chandao, very nice weapon, uh, mm -hmm. very, very classy. Uh, so let's check out the build now. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's have a look. So for the armor sets. So, so this is the so first set. Basically, there's a uh, one thing that was constraining us for technically. Yeah, a thing I want to say before they show all the armor is. That uh, I re the thing I really really like with For Honor that the many other games do wrong uh, about armor and uh, skins and this kind of thing is they always start with a very common um, uh, armor uh, a uh, costume or armor for the hero and they then then they work work it up to a gr uh, better and then better and then a perfect and i think that is a very very good thing because of i think that is very interesting fact, if you have a like if you have a, a super cool armor in the beginning you don't want to do anything more if you already have it and i think that is very good at for honor they make they force you to level up rank you uh, you have a high level and then you can get get cooler armor and I think that is a perfect thing and that is much more enjoying much more satisfi sat satisfying uh, when you uh, g you have to play and you have to play and you have to go higher level and then you can lock up uh, from the better armor and this kind of thing I really like this this system it's very 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 nice and I, I, it's going to be interesting to see next Halloween and next Christmas and next New Year. I hope they make something special for the Wulin in the New Year or b maybe before New Year um, to show uh, like a very special thing for them. Yeah, 
So let's continue. Uh, which was a long rope. Yes. And now the tech evolves, our game evolves, and we could be able to make it work. So this is our, we took that chance that she, he, had, he, and, he and she has the, that rope type of right. outf outfits, gears. Yeah, the assassin looked like a uh, gear. The, the noble aspect of that character, character really comes out from those outfits with all the embroidery, the, the silver threads, those beautiful armors that actually really are pretty historically accurate. You did a really great job on that. So it feels rich. You know? yeah. Yeah, it feels, yeah, it does. Even the way it moves uh, through the when you're gonna see him fighting, them fighting. Uh, yeah, the secondary animation like, yeah. is pretty nice. Yeah. The elegance of like. And this one was uh, inspired by, by the monk. From the oh, so that's game. a monk's coif. Yeah. Okay. Yes. okay. And this one was uh, inspired by the Big Mike. <laughs> <laughs> before the beard left. Before the beard? <laughs> yes. Before you burned your beard. It could be, yeah, before I, my, my beard was singed off by strange alchemical experiments. <laughs> experiments. It's going to grow but back. We had, we had JJ's son right there. <laughs> 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 maybe, maybe not. <laughs> what is really nice with those uh, silverish, goldish uh, yes. embroidery is that the paint pattern goes underneath. So it kind of enrich all the paint patterns that the players can use. Yeah. Pretty nice. We did that on uh, Jung Jun the yeah. first time. It was yep. looking pretty sick. A rich variation of the headgears that they have was mm -hmm. uh, kind of inspiring us a lot to explore mo many different type of uh, helmets. Right. The more, the more geared military one, yeah. look. Yeah, that looks great. So every the the, the gray metal will receive the uh, material change. Mm -hmm. It will be very uh, visible on this guy. Oh yeah, but, uh, this brings back this brings back memories from a lot of movies. Well, yeah, seen. right. That's <laughs> pretty cool. And of course, how can we not have a bald a bald guy? Of course. Yeah, for the year of the Baldinger. Yeah. <laughs> year of the Baldinger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did that. Yeah. So, yep. I'm not that That's sorry. coined right there. <laughs> and a face mask here. So what's up with this guy? Oh yeah, the demon queller. Uh, I'm calling him. Uh, it's uh, more or less a reference to the um, the Chinese deity called. Zhong Kui, if I'm correct, okay. like he uh, he was famous for like slaughtering demons and whatnot in many uh, Chinese tales. Oh, I think some of the folks in re on Reddit like mentioned it uh, at some point, uh, so right. it was nice to read that. <laughs> <laughs> Communities in point as yes. usual. Inspiration everywhere. Right, right on. All right, so th so those are all the outfits that will yeah. be coming out for uh, the Jian Hu. Right. Um, yeah. I, I, my favorite of the armors, uh, armors are the, the green ones and the armor with the mask and the armors with the uh, helmet and the helmet hat. Uh, I really like this one and I, I, know, I, don't, I don't know why, but I think they are very, very, very beautiful. The armor for the Wulins, like the, the new one and the other one. I really like this armor uh, for this. Uh, Sunda and uh, Shang, uh, the other one, uh, the armor. I think this is very cool. I think this um, is probably the best. Um, yeah, this is my favorite armors of all of them. I think, this, uh, of course, uh, Yoman Gandrox have very cool armor, but this one is really, really like. I, re I really like this armor for the Vulin, and that uh, when I see this armor, I really want to upgrade him so much as possible uh, forget all the armor and it's gonna take very long time if you if you just play the hero you take a long time uh, to rank him up like, to level like to have to, to get up to legendary so you can get the like, legendary gear and this kind of thing so yeah it's gonna be very interesting and it's a perfect time of the year for uh, 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 um, playing and har harvesting uh, up a hero in this time and this is perfect time for the best one the, the best always come last and this is the truth of it uh, let's continue anything else we have to watch right now I don't think so right all right well we're done. we'll be coming back later to have a closer look at the weapons but until then we're going to a fight demo to see how that beautiful Chan Dao, Chan Dao. is yes. used uh, with uh, Frankie Boy, aka Nuke, aka Francis Faubert, and Stefan Jawinski, the legend, who will be talking with Mike. So, 
Be right back. Stay tuned. Thank you. Legends themselves, Mr. Stefan Jawinski and Frank, or AKA Nuke. How are you guys doing today? Doing good, and you? Yeah, I'm doing fantastic because we're gonna, you know, deep dive right into the Jan Hu, the new character for year three, season four, for those of you who may be joining us right now. Um, before we get into it, because everybody's excited to see it in game, for sure, but give me one to three words to describe this character. <laughs> I always Mike, ask this. Mike figured out a trick. Yeah. We, okay, we're going with one word. Okay. Uh, okay. But it's an awesome word. Okay. And words of power. So we're going with this one. Uh, the word is limitless. Limitless. Limitless on this character. Tell uh, me intrigued. I'll yes. tell you that much. It's pretty awesome. So why limitless? Uh, Elise may have talked to you a little bit about, uh, about how great a sword fighter this character is. Um, the ruthlessness as, uh, you know, being able to fight on the whole army themselves. The ability to ruthlessly kill their own family member and, and not even care if exactly cold blooded. Yeah, like so we're going to see this in the fight style, uh, the skill in the fight combat kit, and then we're going to see it also in the scorched earth policy of the feet kit. Yes, yeah, so masters of fire, of course. So masters we're of have fire. To see some fire at some point, right? Of course, it's mandatory. Exactly. So yeah. let's dive right into it. Uh, why don't you give us a little bit of the go-to moves for this character as we dive into the arena here? Oh, nice little emote, Frank. I saw that. Don't <laughs> That's worry. Classy. So like here is our uh, Wu Lin hybrid, and we're gonna start right off with the uh, the chains. Basically, it's a two hit chain on this character. Let's start with light light. Was that an unblockable symbol I saw? I think it's normal. Did you press light? Yes, I did. Holy smokes! Okay, light finisher so interesting. Is unblockable. So right off the gate here, there's two two buttons you gotta press, and you're going straight into an unblockable. Exactly. Wow. So it looked like that. They use a stab and a slash, um, and yeah. So we, ha yeah. I don't know if they um, do gonna do the speculation I have for the fighting style for the new uh, for Sunda, and uh, the other one. I'm so sorry, I forget the the other one. Um, and the other one is the the f uh, the fire uh, alchemist. Um, so we're interesting to see uh, how how it's uh, different. Of course, they're gonna be very very different with this hero, comparable to the to Kensei. Um, but they are very, the weapons are a bit similar in in some cases, and different in other cases, and this kind of thing. Yeah, let's continue. Yeah. Why mess around? Yeah. 